Hello and welcome. We're here today to share with you some new product and technology announcements from Canon USA. I'm Scott Antea, Vice President and General Manager of the Imaging Solution Group at Canon. First, I'd like to thank you for watching this announcement. We hope that you, your family, and your friends are remaining safe during this difficult time. We recognize the challenging and unique situation we are in and we want you to know we are all in this together. The following announcements you are about to hear are coming to you in the safest way possible. Each, including my own, were self-shot without crew from inside our own homes. And we know that everyone here has concerns that far outweigh imaging technology, but it is our hope that you enjoy the next hour of information and that it inspires us all for what will come, not just from Canon, but from the creators and storytellers that will employ these technologies. But before we get to that, just a quick message from me and our entire team. To the newscasters and teams that continue to bring us the daily news and updates, we thank you. To the eager truck crews waiting to get back to live events, we're with you. And to the hordes of filmmakers and documentarians waiting to get back out and create, we know you are not sitting idle. Our staff and I, along with the entire country, cannot wait to see the incredible stories you will tell in the wake of current events. And we will be there, as we are now, to support you all as best we can. And lastly, I'd like to thank our staff, who worked tirelessly during this crisis to help keep our business and support going during such a trying time. So please stay safe, and we hope you enjoy what you are about to hear from Canon. We look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thank you for your attention, and please join me in welcoming Elizabeth Pratt, our Director of Strategic Market Relationships for Canon USA. Thank you, Scott. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Pratt, Strategic Market Relationships Director at Canon USA. Normally, I would be addressing you in a meeting room or on the sidelines of a sporting event, or maybe on the set of your latest episode. But instead, I have the opportunity to welcome you into my home. We're in my kitchen. And to help kick off Canon's message to you and to the world. I've been with Canon for, well, longer than I'll admit on camera. And I've had the unique privilege to work directly with so many of you out there who use our equipment to create art, document current events, and just make a living. But hanging around with creative people isn't just my personal passion. It's my role here at Canon, because it's important for us to understand how our equipment is being used in the real world, to understand what you need in order to do your job better or faster or more easily. Part of my role is also understanding the business applications of our equipment and helping to make sure that Canon Gear leads the way in allowing professionals to produce stunning work in practical, real-world settings to meet the needs of your audiences and the markets you serve. Our world and workflows have been evolving, and video has taken hold of so much of our daily lives, from cinema and television to YouTube and streaming, and now in the current climate, virtual meetings and conference calls. It's important for us that we understand the practical and cultural changes in how our equipment's being used, and that we build a seamless system when it comes to equipment compatibility and workflow compatibility. A system where our camera models pair nicely through our consistent color science that allows for easier workflows. Now more than ever, Canon has built a seamless ecosystem of equipment that suits nearly every video market and application, from cinematographers to newscasters, from streaming a Sunday service to creating a nature documentary. The equipment we provide satisfies nearly every workflow, creative style, or budget. And one of the intangible benefits of working with a system like ours is that the nomenclature doesn't change much from camera to camera. There's a familiarity with the menu system and the layouts that accelerates the learning curve as creative pros grow with our gear and the lenses. I love our glass, and so do many of you. You'll find Canon EF mounts on a variety of cameras, both from Canon as well as other manufacturers. Our lenses withstand the test of time, 
and deliver beautiful images in a variety that suits any creative look. And now, with the new RF lenses and R system, we are breaking new boundaries in both optical performance and design. I'm actually using an EOS R right now from my home for the footage you're watching. But the best part of my job is understanding and sharing the human impact of our equipment. We're an imaging company, and images inspire us, educate us, and touch us throughout our lives in such a powerful way. I take pride in seeing the amazing work that you all create with Canon Gear, and I feel so privileged to be part of that creative process. Like many of you, as we've been staying home and hunkering down, I've been in awe of some of the incredibly creative work streaming to my television, compelling stories and amazing scenes. I've also been glued to press conferences and daily updates captured by one-person crews in socially distant situations. And I've taken the time to pull out some old photos and videos of my own and reflect on cherished memories. And that fills me with joy and hope. So for today, please remain safe and enjoy hearing about some of the technology we plan to roll out later this year. And be sure to stick around until the end because we may share a nugget or two of what's coming in the future as well. Thank you for joining us. And it's my pleasure to introduce you to Paul Hawkshurst, a senior professional market specialist at Canon, who's going to walk you through our first product introduction. Hi everyone, this is Paul with Canon USA, and I'm coming at you safely from home here in New York City. And I am so, so excited to be able to announce to you the Canon C300 Mark III. I am very, very happy about this. I've been waiting for Canon to release a camera like this for years. Um, and so it, it's so happy to actually get to hold it in my hand and, and to see it. Um, this camera is really the culmination, at least to me, it's the culmination of Cinema EOS. And without much further ado, let's get right to the main specs. Starting off, we have a brand new 4K Super 35mm dual gain output sensor. For me, this is the big one because this sensor is capable of delivering over 16 stops of total dynamic range. Next on the list, it wouldn't be a Canon camera without a Digic processor. And this one uses the Digic DV7. This is also the same engine that drives the C500 Mark II and allows us to do the following. 4K in UHD as well as 2K in HD up to 120 frames with no crop. Additionally, if you choose to do the Super 16mm crop, you can do 2K up to 180 frames per second. The two recording formats in the camera are Cinema Raw Lite and XFAVC. Another feature that's going to make a lot of people happy, user interchangeable lens mounts, finally coming to the C300 line. Another new feature of the C300 is the ability to de-squeeze anamorphic lenses and to be able to monitor the corrected field of view. Well, it certainly wouldn't be a Cinema EOS camera if we didn't talk about dual pixel autofocus. And this camera has it in spades. Another interesting feature that we're seeing gain a lot of ground because of its inclusion in the C500 Mark II, this camera has electronic image stabilization, which works in XFAVC. Something people have been asking for in the C300 for a long time, it's finally here. You can install your own LUTs. The C300 Mark III comes with a 12G SDI output. And this is gonna be able to give you 4K through one cable. I've only just started to scratch the surface of the features of this camera, but for now, why don't we take a tour of the body? Now, I know what you're thinking. When you saw this the first time, you were probably like, Paul, what are you doing? That's a C500 Mark II. Well, actually, the camera is the exact same body as the C500 Mark II. That's right, right down to the 3.9 pounds weight and the balance of it. So this is a really interesting thing. That means that all of your C500 Mark II accessories are gonna work on this camera. It kind of ushers in a new era of interchangeability on set. With the EU V1 or the EU V2, the camera becomes primed to become a full broadcast experience. With our combination of RS422, with the Genlock, and with the 12G output, you can hook it up to a multi-dyne silverback system and you can take a fiber connection from that directly to any broadcast studio that you need to go. What can you shoot with this thing? All right, so first off, we've established that the camera can record cinema raw light to the CF Express cards. And again, this is in any crop mode. So Super 35 crop mode, you're going to be getting 4K cinema raw light up to 120 frames per second. If I go into the Super 16 millimeter crop mode, 
then I can shoot 2K cinema raw light up to 180 frames a second. In 4K, the cinema raw light comes at a data usage of one gigabit per second. While in the 2K mode, you're looking at 250 megabits per second. So quite a savings in data. An important note about cinema raw light is that in frame rates leading up to 30 and including 30, you're gonna be shooting 12 bit depth. But if you exceed 30, then it goes down to 10 bit. Uh, so something just to keep in mind when you're planning your projects. Let's take a look at now at XFAVC. XFAVC is Canon's proprietary AVC codec. Uh, we first came out with in the original C300 Mark II, and then we used it in pretty much every cinema EOS camera since then. So while you're in AVC, your available resolutions in the Super 35 mode are 4K DCI, UHD, 2K DCI, Full HD, and 720. When you go into the Super 16 crop mode, you're going to be getting 2K, Full HD, and also 720. One of the nice things about the XFAVC in this camera is that not only do you have the standard bit rates, but they've also included a long gap mode, which greatly increases the amount of space that you can have on the card. And maybe of tantamount importance when talking about XFAVC with this camera is that all modes of XFAVC are recorded at 10-bit 422 color sampling. Probably the most important thing we need to talk about on this camera is the newly designed dual gain output sensor. Now this is a 4K Super 35 millimeter CMOS sensor that expands the dynamic range to over 16 stops. How does it do that? Well, to really get down to it, we need to go deep. We need to go down to the sensor level. So if you ever sat through in a Cinema EOS presentation, there's a very good chance you've seen this slide. Basically what it's showing is that each pixel in the sensor is split into two different diodes. Those diodes are always taking two frames of the exact same image. Now for dual pixel autofocus, it's using those two frames for phase detection. However, the Canon engineers realized that they can use those two different frames and value them at different gains in order to expand the dynamic range. And so what's happening here is that off of diode A, you have one image that is of low gain and hence low noise. Off of diode B, you're getting a frame that is of higher gain, but it satisfi satisfies the pixel's need for saturation. So these two separate frames that are of the same image of the exact same point in time, but at two separate gains are combined and then dumped out of the sensor. Because these two frames are of the exact same point in time and of the exact same image, there's absolutely zero temporal artifacting happening with this. What the dual gain output sensor gives us then is a lower noise floor and hence a much wider usable latitude. And this is especially true in the shadow region. Now this expansion of the dynamic range is available in, in all shooting modes, RAW, XFAVC, 4K and 2K, and Super 35 millimeter and Super 16 millimeter. When you're in the Super 35 millimeter mode, you can get this up to 60 frames per second. When you exceed 60 frames per second, the camera reverts to the typical dynamic range that you're used to of the C300 Mark II or any of the earlier Cinema EOS cameras. In the Super 16 mode, you can go up to 120 frames, but beyond that, the dynamic range goes back down to 15 stops. The reliability and performance and quality that Canon's been cultivating for the last eight years of Cinema EOS has reached its apotheosis of the C300 Mark III. And that's really thanks to all of you, all the feedback we've received from rental houses, from DPs, from broadcasters, from owner operators, everybody who's managed to work with the Canon brand and send us feedback. Thank you. One more thing before we go. The C300 Mark III will be available later this year in 2020 and priced at $10,999 US dollars. Thanks, Paul. Up next, from the city of brotherly love, we have Ryan Snyder, professional market specialist for Canon's Imaging Solutions Group, who will introduce an exciting new cinema lens. Hi, I'm Ryan Snyder, and I'm very excited to share with you today that we are introducing a new Cine Servo lens. This is the CN 10 x 25 IAS, also known as the Cine Servo 25-250. If you're familiar with our Cine Servo lenses, you probably already know about the impressive range we offer, from our versatile wide-angle 17-120 to the unique Ultra Telephoto 50-1000. to 
This new model strengthens our lineup as it finds its place in between these two popular lenses. With a powerful 10x optical zoom range and Super 35 sensor coverage, this lens is sure to become a mainstay of broadcast and cinema productions. With its medium telephoto range and servo operation, it will appeal to live event, sports, nature, documentary, and news applications. At the same time, it lends itself perfectly to commercial and cinema productions with its uncompromising 4K image quality. Like all our cinema lenses, it offers minimal breathing, warm color for pleasing skin tones, and durable weather resistant construction. Let's look at some specs. From 25 millimeter at the wide angle to 250 millimeter on the tele side, this lens is incredibly versatile. It has a built-in 1.5x extender, which increases the telephoto end to an impressive 375 millimeters with only one stop light loss. As an added benefit, using the extender allows for full frame sensor coverage. More on that in a minute. It features a fast T2.95 aperture, which only ramps to T3.95 past 187 millimeters. That gives you almost a 7 to 1 zoom range flat, with no ramping at wide open. There's an 11 blade iris that delivers a beautiful, smooth bokeh for cinematic out of focus backgrounds. It has a 4 foot close focus distance for working in tight spaces. The lens features a removable servo motor drive unit that offers the same feel and usability as a conventional ENG lens. It allows smooth, adjustable, low and high speed zooming, as well as three 20 pin Hirose digital inputs for controlling focus and zoom and iris, and a 16 bit absolute value encoder for working with virtual systems. This lens features 180 degree focus rotation for precise but quick handheld operability. The grip is ergonomically designed for optimum balance to reduce fatigue on long handheld shoots. The focus, zoom, and iris rings are geared for compatibility with a fizz unit for either remote or crew-based operation. The gear pitches are 0.8 and 0.5 for focus, 0.5 for zoom, and 0.4 for iris. The 25 to 250 is available in either EF or PL mounts. The EF version is compatible with all of our Cinema EOS features such as dual pixel autofocus and focus guide, which provides visual confirmation when manually focusing. The PL mount version supports the widely adopted Cook Eye technology for metadata pass-through. The mount can be swapped at a Canon factory service center. Most impressive, however, is that with all these features and this incredible zoom range, the lens weighs in at only 6.7 pounds and measures just over 11 inches. Compare that to our 17 to 120, which weighs 6.3 pounds and measures 10.3 inches. This 25 to 250 is a great companion lens to it, with plenty of crossover range. Remember I mentioned that when using the 1.5x extender, the lens can cover full frame? As we see more full frame cinema cameras appear in the market, like our C500 Mark II and C700 full frame, cinema zoom lens options are somewhat limited for the time being. On full frame, this lens is a 37.5 to 375 millimeter with an impressive aperture range of T4.4 to 5.9, all on a very compact and lightweight lens. With the flick of a switch, it really is two lenses in one. In a short amount of time, our 17 to 120 has become a standard in the industry because it offers an incredible cinematic image with familiar broadcast feel and operation. Users I have spoken to only wished for one thing, more range. I have no doubt the Cine Servo 25 to 250, with its increased telephoto range, lightweight design, and proven Canon image quality, will be just as popular. This lens will be available later this year for the price of $29,999. For more information after this virtual press conference, visit the Canon USA website and follow us on social media. Thanks for your attention. I'll be back shortly to tell you about some more exciting announcements. It's my pleasure to introduce our next segment where we'll hear about new technologies in the world of broadcast television. Our next presenter is Jaman Lomax, 
Canon's National Sales Manager, TV Broadcast and Production. Hi, I'm Jamal Lomax, National Broadcast Sales Manager for the U.S. and Latin America at Canon USA. I'm here today to tell you about the latest introduction to our award-winning lineup of 4K UHD broadcast lenses. For over 60 years, Canon has been a trusted name in broadcast optics. As productions have advanced from standard definition to HD and now to 4K UHD, Canon lenses have been there every step of the way. Our gear can be found on the field, in the studio, and on the streets, delivering captivating imagery for some of the most watched moments in our history. Throughout our decades in the industry, we have worked hand in hand with leading broadcasters and broadcast camera manufacturers to develop new products and technologies that advance the art form of imaging. When 2020 began, Canon had the largest lineup of two third inch 4K lenses in the world with 17 different options to choose from. Now we're adding an 18th lens to the team. Back in 2018, we introduced the CJ18 by 7.6 as a versatile mid-range option in our UHD GC line of cost-effective 4K UHD portable lenses. Now, we're proud to introduce its younger sibling, the CJ18 by 7.6 KASE. It features all of the imaging excellence of the original, but with the two-time extender removed. By eliminating the extender, we're able to maintain a compact and lightweight design in order to meet the versatile and ever-changing needs of a broad range of video productions. At only 3.7 pounds, it's an ideal choice for documentaries, sports, house of worship, and news coverage, as well as an attractive option for POV placements, steady cam, and robotic applications. The new KASE lens delivers 4K UHD quality at a price point that matches well with many lower cost 4K cameras in the market today. This lens achieves high level 4K UHD performance across the entire zoom range of 7.6 to 137 millimeter, all thanks to Canon's proprietary optical design technology. In addition, the lens supports the BT2020 wide color gamut, which is essential to HDR imaging. The ergonomics and digital servo controls of the lens are similar to Canon's current lineup of portable zoom lenses, providing users with maximum mobility in a variety of shooting situations. When combined with the rest of our UHD GC and UHD XS lenses, we now have an astounding lineup of 18 4K UHD broadcast lenses, all capable of satisfying your creative needs regardless of application. Five super telephoto box lenses covering a broad spectrum of zoom ranges for capturing sports, concerts, and live events, while the UHD Digi Super 27 offers a powerful in-studio solution. On the portable lens side, we now offer 12 ENG EFP solutions for originating 4K UHD imagery. When you combine this diverse array of lensing options with Canon's reputation for optical precision and our award-winning customer service and support, it's no wonder why we've been the brand of choice for some of the most significant broadcasts in the world. And now, to tell you a bit more about our latest broadcast offerings, my colleague and friend, Larry Thorpe. Thank you very much, Jamon. It's a pleasure to share information with you all about Canon's new advanced broadcast lens controllers. At the same time Canon was developing a major breakthrough in long zoom field lenses, our engineers had also elected to develop a game-changing advance in the lens controllers. To set the stage, the full servo system is an all-electronic control system and shown here is the focus demand controller. And shown here is the companion electronic zoom demand controller. On the right is the new focus demand and one can see an immediate difference with the standard controller on the left in the form of a built-in electronic display. Equally with the new zoom demand, you will note that it too has a built-in display. These two new controllers will work with all of our broadcast lenses listed here, the box and the portable lenses, and both HDTV and 4K UHD lenses, and our Cine Servo Super 35mm lenses. We will now look more closely at the focus demand. 
Here we show the physical challenge that confronts the camera operator, namely the heightened sensitivity of that physical control knob as the resolution of the lens camera system increases. In 4K UHD, only a small movement of that knob makes a significant change in focus. This shows the technical details of the new focus demand controller. Note the buttons and switches that are not on the standard controller. They facilitate the presetting of a number of operational modes, each one specifically tailored to a unique shooting environment. To illustrate the amazing new enhancements to operational flexibilities afforded by the new focus demand, we'll briefly examine three modes selected from the total available. Fine Focus Mode 1 is tailored to the quite special shooting environments of broadcast television coverage of live stage shows, a major element within outside broadcasts around the world. Typically, the lens is at the back of the opera house, theatre or auditorium, and the camera operator finds the central focus point for the on-stage talent. During rehearsal, the range of required focus changes is established, and now the focus demand is preset to provide that restricted optical focus range, but with a wide knob rotation range. This facilitates very precise focusing on the chosen subject, here you see the diagrammatic representation of fine focus mode 1 setting and on the right is shown the representation as it appears in the focus demand display. This picture illustrates a live opera scene being televised with the camera operator using the fine focus mode 1 to achieve a beautifully smooth and high precision focus on a facial close-up, very common in operatic broadcasts. In live television coverage of theatrical stage dramas, the need for facial close-ups is also common. Finally, this fine focus mode allows very smooth and precise live rack focusing between different talent on a stage. Our second operational mode that can be preset is focus range limit. Here the desire is to be able to refocus subjects whose movements are limited. Here the camera operator prefers to achieve these adjustments with a limited amount of focus knob rotation. Showing the diagrammatic representation of limitations to both the focus range and the knob control range around the chosen central focus. Illustrating the limited knob rotation to refocus on different subjects. The third mode is termed control range limit and it's the virtual opposite of the fine focus mode 1. Here the camera operator seeks a wide range of optical focus control but implemented with a small range of focus knob control. The diagram illustrates this and the associated display portrayal is shown. Illustrating the normal action of the focus knob, showing the achievement of a substantial readjustment of focus but achieved with a curtailed range of focus knob rotation. Now we turn to the new zoom controller. Like the focus demand, this zoom demand has buttons and switches that allow a wide variety of operational controls to be preset. This new zoom demand retains all the traditional programmable functions that have been in zoom controllers for many years, but it has some interesting additions. The built-in display greatly facilitates the many presetting options. The display supports easy selection of the desired zoom control curve, it also facilitates the reversal of the thumb control rocker to cater to the preference of different camera operators. Up next, we have Nate McFarlane, a senior specialist in our Quality Assurance and Control Division, who will walk us through the latest developments for Canon's line of 4K reference displays. Hi, my name is Nate McFarlane, Senior Quality Engineer for Canon USA. Today, I'm pleased to announce exciting new feature and firmware upgrades coming to our DPV lineup of professional HDR reference displays. Our frequent product updates strive to continually push the boundaries of our displays, ensuring that our users can confidently tackle any challenge of SDR or HDR video production. This iteration that's set to release later this year is no different. Let's review some of the highlight changes coming with these exciting new updates. Let's start right away with some breakthrough image quality improvements. When shooting HDR content, preserving details in both the deepest shadows and the brightest highlights is of utmost importance. Keeping this in mind, I'm pleased to announce today that due to improvements in both our image processing and local dimming algorithms, 
our 2411, 1710, and 1711 displays will now all feature an improved full screen black level of 0.001 nits, which is a major upgrade from the previous 0.005 nit specification. The best part is this enhancement is completely free and will be included along with our firmware package coming later this year. For our broadcast and live production users, we're offering an additional paid license upgrade for both our 1710 and 1711 displays. This upgrade will raise the overall full screen peak luminance from 600 to 1000 nits. And we're also increasing the full screen peak luminance that's supported by our local dimming algorithm from 300 to 600 nits. These peak luminance and local dimming enhancements along with the free black level upgrade completely overhaul the image quality performance from our 17 inch displays, which will now boast an impressive 1 million to 1 full screen contrast ratio. Now let's switch gears to some upcoming free firmware changes. Lookup tables or LUTs play a huge role in conforming color appearance both on set and during post. The ability to quickly and reliably load LUTs into your display device is critical. In our upcoming update, users can now import 1D and 3D .cube LUT files directly into any of our displays via USB without the use of any converter software or additional tooling. One of the most popular features included in our award-winning HDR toolkit is our pixel value checker, a function which displays the current luminance and RGB code value of any given pixel. In our upcoming firmware update, we've also added a chromaticity diagram on off toggle. This will also show the plotted XY coordinate of the same pixel directly on the display, allowing for quick color gamut references and QC confirmations. To further boost our display's seamless integration with industry cinema cameras, we're updating our existing EOS cinema link function. All of our displays will now make automatic color range changes based on Canon cinema camera metadata. Furthermore, we're including new built-in LUTs that will convert video signals taken from red digital cinema cameras to traditional SDR and HDR color gamuts. Along with these changes, we've also made feature improvements, and quality of life updates to our existing web control, range check, area marker, and waveform functions. In addition, we've added a brand new error log export feature, which will allow for easy signal and power troubleshooting during production. We've really only scratched the surface of what's coming with these upgrades and are excited to share more information. Check back to this page later today or the Canon USA website in the coming months to learn more about these updates and their availability. Once again, we welcome back Ryan Snyder, who will now introduce the latest firmware developments for Canon's professional video and Cinema EOS cameras. Hi, Ryan Snyder here again, and now on to what you've been waiting for, camera firmware updates. These pro video and cinema updates add features to extend the functionality of the cameras and are based on feedback from the field. Let's begin with the XF705. Currently, if you want to record in 4K resolution, you must use the H265 XFHEVC codec. While that codec is extremely efficient, providing 10-bit 422-4K and manageable file sizes, it does require some major horsepower in an editing system for smooth playback. That's why we're adding 4K UHD, XFAVC, and HD MP4 recording modes. You will now be able to record 4K 8-bit 420 video up to 30p in our tried and true H.264 XFAVC format. Additionally, you can record Full HD or 720 in good old MP4 up to 60p. The XF705 will also be getting support for our browser remote feature over Ethernet. In addition to the existing Wi-Fi support, this will allow you to control camera settings, zoom, and focus from any web browser through a reliable hardwired connection. Along with the XF705, we're adding the capability for the C500 Mark II and C200 and 200B to pull down a 60p or 60i signal to 24 or 30p over the SDI and HDMI outputs. This allows the look of the video to be changed without affecting the output signal. This will appeal to live productions, particularly House of Worship, 
that wish to change the frame rate aesthetic during an event seamlessly with the touch of a button. The C200 and 200B will now have the ability to use the HDMI and SDI outputs simultaneously, which will make a lot of people happy as it expands options for monitoring and transmitting the image. The C500 Mark II gets a host of new additions. You will now be able to record proxy files while shooting in XFAVC mode and have the choice of applying a Rec. 709 LUT. This will provide an offline editing solution for XFAVC in addition to Cinema Raw Lite. There's a new menu option, which allows the file names to be identical when recording in double slot mode. The real number and random ID assigned to the file will now match exactly between the two cards, making life easier for production shooting double slot for backup purposes. XFAVC long gop support will be added, allowing for smaller file sizes in both 4K and HD. Interlaced HD and 720 options will be included as well. Finally, the following cameras will be adding support for our new Cine Servo 25 to 250 lens. The C200 and 200B, C300 Mark II, C500 Mark II, and all C700 models. Chromatic aberration and peripheral illumination correction, as well as dual pixel CMOS autofocus will be supported. So there you have it, a lot of firmware updates coming to enhance these already great cameras. Look for these updates later this year. Thanks so much for your attention, and I wish you well. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you back in the field soon. Now it's my privilege to welcome Larry Thorpe, Senior Fellow of Canon's Imaging Technologies and Communications Group, who will give an overview of Canon's new volumetric data technology. And, a little later in the segment, he'll be joined by Mike Davis, Senior Vice President of Field and Technical Operations for Fox Sports and Chairman of the Sports Video Group. Hello everybody, Larry Thorpe joining you again and switching gears to speak about an emerging area that may be new to many of you, volumetric video, where we will share with you Canon's progress in this exciting field. In simple terms, volumetric video is the process of capturing moving images of the real world, encompassing people and objects, that can be used as information to create free viewpoint video a naturally moving dynamic 3D model reproduction from any angle and at any moment in time. They are a form of avatars, but reproduced with very high visual fidelity. These models can be observed from arbitrary viewpoints in a virtual or augmented reality scene. Let's start by taking a look at the principles of volumetric video capturing in the context of sports. First, a large number of cameras are placed around the stadium or arena and synchronized video capture is performed. Next, silhouettes of objects such as players or balls are extracted from the images captured by each camera. The same is done for the background minus the silhouettes that have been extracted. Now that we have the extracted object outlines from all the cameras, this data is used to reconstruct three-dimensional information of the objects. Finally, a path for a virtual camera from a vantage point decided by the producer is created and the object is overlapped on the background according to the position and orientation of the virtual camera. We have now created a free viewpoint video. At a series of international rugby matches held in Japan last year, Canon successfully captured entire matches as 3D data and generated multiple streams of free viewpoint video within an hour of capture. As an achievement of the rugby matches, we're now able to generate free viewpoint content three seconds after capture, which allows us to generate a camera path and check the final image on site and deliver content in a short period of time. Anticipating multiple applications outside of sports coverage, but applying the technologies we have developed in sports video creation, Canon plans to launch a volumetric video creation service in a studio environment. By applying processing specific to the studio space, image quality will be improved beyond what was achieved in stadium capture. A volumetric video studio is being prepared in Kawasaki less than half an hour outside of Tokyo and will be opening, hopefully, in mid-May. 
following our features with the planned volumetric video studio. A wide area capable of the simultaneous capture of a 10-person performance. Quick one-stop delivery service within a week from capture to video creation. Deliver not only 2D video content, but also 3D data to be used for AR, holograms, etc. Improved image quality through the use of smaller voxel sizes and studio-specific processing. Let's take a look at the main specifications of the Kawasaki Studio. The darker green capture area itself is 26 feet by 26 feet and 11 feet high. The green dotted line shows the studio footprint, which is 66 feet by 46 feet and 13.8 feet high. There's a video editing suite adjacent to the studio where you can view the captured images as volumetric video. You can also explore the camera path while manipulating the virtual camera. Please take a look at some sample volumetric video clips that were created in our studio. Here you can see eight dancers being captured simultaneously. The Kawasaki Studio will have the capability of capturing a 10-person performance. A 3D model of the entire space was created, which allows for viewpoint paths through the dancers or from above that would be difficult to accomplish with physical cameras. We will deliver high quality content such as shown here as a one-stop service from capture to video creation. Details and facial expressions can be produced since in comparison to stadium capture, the number of cameras per capture area is higher in the studio. And in the studio currently being built, the number of cameras would be increased in comparison to when we shot these clips. This will, of course, improve the quality of production even further. And now we're going to chat with Mike Davis of Fox Sports, who has seen the free viewpoint system in action, and he will tell us a little bit about it. You had occasion to go to Japan not so long ago to a major rugby event that was being covered by our free viewpoint system. Could you tell us what you saw there and what you thought I of it? I was lucky enough to go to Yokohama and meet with the uh, Canon Inc. team. Um, very interested in, in seeing the free viewpoint system. Up to that point, we'd seen a lot of demonstrations, and I was extremely uh, uh, inspired by what what I saw. Um, certainly a large array, a large setup, but the result ended up being um, what I thought was kind of the promise of volumetric capture. Um, we've been thinking about volumetric capture for a while, but uh, what I saw was volumetric capture in action. And by that, I mean a camera that can basically be placed anywhere on the field of play to get any angle at any time. And what was amazing about it was that it was done in near real time. And, and why do you think, you say you've been looking at volumetric capture, why do you think volumetric capture is important to the sports industry? Larry, I think that volumetric capture is the holy grail of sports coverage. It allows a completely new point of view for the fan. Um, for time immoral, we have been shooting sports from the outside in. We've got plenty of cameras that shoot many with very nice Canon lenses on them that shoot the camera, shoot the action from the stands, from the camera positions. Volumetric capture was always interesting to us, even in its theoretical phase, of being a way to shoot a sport, to shoot an event from the inside out, to get the kinds of viewpoints that, quite frankly, our newer audiences, our younger demographics are used to seeing through video games and the types of, uh, types of interactions they have every day. So we thought that volumetric capture in general was a way to achieve a digital rendering of the entire production so that you could go back and look at any number of angles uh, in any, um, any possible uh, in any possible uh, angle that, that that you might be able to come up with, and uh, to do it with a free range of motion while the action was actually going on was a an an absolute uh, an absolute eye opener for us. The fact that uh, the recreation are essentially avatars of the actual players does that affect the reality of it from the viewer's point of view? 
are is, is the assumption that they may not know. I, I would actually debate the point that they were avatars. I would say that uh, by using the array of free viewpoint cameras and the processing in the background uh, basically creates a three-dimensional picture of the athletes, not unlike you see on, on TV. So whereas previous technology has actually used avatars to, uh, I would say, simulate um, the action, uh, I think that actually gathering the information in digital, in, in real space and turning it into a digital 3D model essentially is, goes way beyond uh, using avatars. I mean, these are, uh, these, are, these are recreations that show the movements of uh, heads and extremities that show the ball. I mean, it, it, it is the event. And um, do you see it being favorable to one particular sport over another? Or do you think in, in the longer term it has applications for virtually all sporting events? I think volumetric capture probably has um, applications for every sporting event out there. Um, the weight on um, volumetric capture is simply the size of the uh, arena that you're attempting to um, capture. So you know, the larger the arena, the larger the array of equipment. So that could be uh, problematic or at least something to overcome. However, um, I think that in time, uh, every event, whether you're talking about basketball, fighting, uh, certainly football, and as we've seen rugby and, um, and American football, of course, as well, could definitely benefit from volumetric capture. I think it's just a matter of the installation and the uh, hamsters and wheels that make it go. And apart from outside broadcasts of sporting events and other things, do you see applications for volumetric capture in the studio, in entertainment, in other television genres? I think that capturing anything in, uh, in the entertainment world would also be very useful if you think about uh, concerts and performances and, uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, even um, uh, even scripted programming uh, could be used uh, and portrayed in volumetric, whether you're doing it as your final product or you're using volumetric capture as a tool to augment other things like we're thinking about in sports. So I think that volumetric absolutely has a, uh, a life and a, a, uh, a, 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 a complete um, uh, potential for everything else. The other thing, Larry, I would say is that for studio dailies um, and different things where, you know, you might be able to pre-visualize uh, movie scenes and other things uh, potentially done in, in, in CG could be a, uh, a very interesting use of the technology. You see, once, it seems to me, once you get whatever you're capturing in that 3D environment, you can essentially do what you want with it. Yeah. You can replace things, you can add things, you can augment things. And I think that overall, what volumetric does and what the free viewpoint system promises is an incredible amount of control over whatever you end up capturing. And speaking of control, um, what did you think of where we had brought the operational side of it, the, 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 the folks at the control panel playing with that virtual camera? Uh, is that at a level where it's workable for operators around the world? Well, I think that w what I saw in, in Japan were controls that were very similar to those that are used by Skycam or uh, Spidercam, um, where, the, um, where the operators were allowed to fly around in free space using joysticks. And then they combine that with uh, a methodology of keyframes to um, to uh, come up with the replay. So I thought that um, it worked both in the live space. In other words, a trained operator could actually follow the action live and in the post space of creating different looks and events and, uh, and, uh, and, and walkthroughs of various uh, areas of interest that, um, that can work as well. So I think we saw both sides in Japan. Well, frankly, I think that, does it? I, that 
wraps up. I think you've given us a great overview of what you saw and what you think of the capability of um, Free Viewpoint. And we thank you very sincerely for that. Well, it's been great for me to see the progression and I'm looking forward to seeing what Canon does next with it. Very good. Thank you, Michael. All right. Thanks, Larry. Take care. And now for a real treat, please welcome Drew McCallum, technical advisor in Canon's consumer experience marketing team to share with us a little bit of what's to come from Canon in the near future. Hello and welcome to Canon USA's virtual press conference. I'm Drew McCallum, technical advisor for Canon USA. And as you can see, I'm filming this from my home office here in New York. And I'm happy to have the privilege to tell you about some exciting new information about the upcoming Canon EOS R5 mirrorless camera. But first, a little flashback. 2008 was an interesting year for the Canon EOS system. Building on a very popular platform, the EOS 5D, the second generation camera, the EOS 5D Mark II, revolutionized the moving picture industry. Allowing for filmmakers to capture movie footage with a relatively small camera body with a 24 by 36 millimeter size sensor. A format that was larger than the existing super 35 millimeter format that they were used to. This full frame camera set forth a new trend in motion picture capture, allowing for very low light performance, shallow depth of field, and use of lenses not generally accessible to everyday filmmaker. This small little camera priced below $4,000 would set a new direction for Canon. Setting the DSLR movie making world on fire and bringing high quality filmmaking, not to just major motion picture budgets, but to the indie filmmaker, documentaries, as well as web-based content and journalism. Now flash forward to 2011 and introduction of Cinema EOS with a Canon C300, a dedicated motion picture camera for the movie professionals. But it was not just a new camera, this was a whole new line of cameras and lenses that would take the industry by storm. There are now dedicated cinema lenses that range from fast primes to super cine zoom lenses such as the instantly legendary 50-1000 to that would break technological boundaries. And Canon recently put out a premium set of lenses released last year called Canon Sumire Primes that bring a different character to the look of the film. Now, just a couple years ago, September of 2018 to be exact, I was thrilled to be able to help launch the totally new EOS R system, our full frame mirrorless system of cameras and lenses that's here to set the future for Canon. With the EOS R and RP and a total of nine RF lenses and a several adapters now on the market and quite a few more to come out even this year, the EOS R system is growing quickly. I'm not just reminiscing here. I bring this all up for a specific reason. That is, Canon's direction for a seamless movie creating experience. The DSLR technology grew, and I'll admit, maybe not as fast as some would have liked, but looking back you can see what Canon had in mind. The engineers developed new sensor technology that would literally change the focus of filmmaking, no pun intended. Canon's dual pixel CMOS autofocus would allow for fast and accurate autofocus on the go, allow for very smooth focus transitions from subject to subject, and would eventually see additions and enhancements such as face, eye, and head detection. Now, what does all that have to do with today? I'm happy to bring a few more nuggets of information to you on our previously announced development of the upcoming EOS R5. While I assure you, this additional information is not all of what's coming in the next EOS R, these are some relevant features that will again enhance the seamless integration of stills and video. Back in February, we stated that Canon Inc. was developing the next full-frame mirrorless R system camera, the EOS R5, and would feature a newly designed CMOS sensor, would capture 8K video, and would be the first camera with IBIS, in-body image stabilization, to name a few of the video-centric features. Additionally, we would like to add that the 8K video capture will be able to record up to 30p, 2997 to be exact, with 422 10-bit Canon log or 422 10-bit HDRPQ, all with full width of the full frame sensor and includes Canon's remarkable dual pixel CMOS AF in all 8K modes, and will be able to record internally. One other important note is that you'll be able to record 8K raw video internally at up to 30p, again, full width of the sensor and also supporting autofocus with dual pixel CMOS AF. Now we know that 8K is a bit of a hard file to digest, but 
the capabilities of 8K are already being realized in broadcast and content creation across the world. For those of you who may not be ready for 8K, the EOS R5 will also be able to capture 4K at up to 120p, and also 422 10-bit with Canon Log, and also with a full width of the sensor, and again, all 4K modes will support dual pixel CMOS AF, and yes, even the 4K 120p. All of this will be able to record to the dual card slots using either the CF Express for those data heavy formats, or if you don't need such a file, you can record to the UHS-2 SD card. To enhance the stability of the footage, Canon is introducing sensor-based IBIS, in-body image stabilization, that when combined with Canon lenses will offer optical and in-body stabilization combined together. Autofocus has also greatly been enhanced, and you can see some of the technology in recently announced and now shipping EOS 1DX Mark III. With new technology, we're able to track your subject's head, face, and eyes, and for you nature and wildlife filmmakers, a new animal detection autofocus technology has been implemented. Tracking the animal's face, eye, and body of the animal, such as dogs, cats, and birds. Now that's it for me for now. I assure you we've not revealed all the advancements of the EOS R5 camera yet. There are a lot more to come. We are working on that, plus a few more lenses for this year, so keep watching usa.canon.com for more information about the upcoming EOS R5 and more products coming soon. Thank you all for spending some time with us today. We hope you found this information about what's to come useful and exciting. Please revisit this webpage, www.usa.canon.com slash VPC2020 in the coming days for this video, as well as additional resources and materials about our new announcements and introductions. Thank you again for joining us and stay well.